How's it going everyone? Virtually Chris here. Welcome to episode 2 of my self-driving series. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys the 3D printed housing that I finally have got completed for my comma Neo here. And um, an unfortunate thing happened. Uh, it warped. I left it in the windshield too long. It actually warped completely off the car. So I definitely need to get a new housing with the right material, but that's something for the future. Uh, but yeah, we have everything officially mounted in there. We have the motherboard, or circuit board. We have the fan, which is great. And uh, as you can see, the phone is in there. Here is the mount that goes into the car windshield. It essentially replaces the rear view mirror with this. And since I didn't have the correct cable, this is the one I bought from Walmart. It doesn't fit in the... Uh, caved out section where the cable is supposed to fit, but I'm perfectly happy with it sticking out like this. Makes it easy to take in and out uh, just by doing that. So if I don't want this in my car, I can unplug this and plug the phone into the wall outlet to charge, and then I can just plug this right back in when I want it in my car. Here we have the cable I made. It's looking pretty decent. Unfortunately, my white connector got desoldered somehow. <laughs> in the last few test drives I've been doing, so I need to solder this back on. Uh, but once I do that, we'll be ready to go back on the streets and test this thing out. So here we are on a residential road here, just uh, showing how the system performs. And uh, if you look at the software up here, it's been updated a little bit since last time. Uh, it says open pilot on, has some current speed and all that. It looks a little bit easier to see and is calibrated now, which is definitely a good thing. So we have open pilot running right now on a little more open street. As you can see, it uh, performs very well. It's keeping us nice and centered in the lane and a nice following distance from the car in front of us. Now, it could never make this turn, I know that. Uh, this turns a little bit too much for the Honda Civic. Obviously, this isn't the software limitation. This is more of a limitation of this car in particular. So other cars might have a little bit better steering torque. Now we're getting on a faster highway, which is kind of what Open Pilot is the best at. You know, the lanes are clearly marked, and uh, overall it just makes it easy. There's not any super harsh turns. So up here, here we are making a nice, smooth turn, heading to Portland. So if I do a lane change over here, you can see it'll see this guy in front of me and uh, kind of slow down, which is exactly what you'd want. So we're going to take this exit and do more traffic tests. So once again, here we are on a straightaway. And the system handles this very well. Uh, we're going to have someone merging in in front of us here. It'll show up on open pilot as someone on the radar and uh, yeah you're gonna see that with this person moving in the radar locks on to him and yeah we're never gonna hit him because the radar is locked on so now we're gonna take another exit get some food so we're gonna take the Scarborough exit I'll enable open pilot now so we can we can see how it does it can merge into lanes obviously you got to be careful no one's gonna pop in from the side, but. All right, so here we are. As you can see, it'll probably merge in for us. I'm gonna increase the speed a little bit. I mean, this is really the ideal situation right here. A nice straight road, a few curves here and there, but it's well marked. And uh, I mean, it really works great for that. There's no question about it, this really works great uh, when you're on a highway for sure. But it also works when you're not on a highway, so that's something very important to know. So 
So as you can see on roads like this, it still works great. Going through intersections, it kind of uses contextual information and the lanes on the other side to make sure it goes right through the intersection. So pretty awesome technology, definitely up there with Tesla's autopilot. So here's what happens when we're going to a complete stop. As you can see, it slowly slows down until it's about three or four meters in front of the car in front of us. So once again, here we go. We're gonna not do anything and it's going to accelerate up to speed. Once again, we're back on a residential road just showing how open pilot performs. Uh, very, very respectable. Definitely on par with autopilot. So you can see this person's actually going to a complete stop because of that person turning and it handled it just fine. Uh, no worries there. Something open pilot still needs to get a little bit better on is how it handles hills since the lane lines aren't exactly straight when you're going down hills. So I've been noticing a little bit of weaving when I'm going down a hill, but it's not really a big deal as long as you uh, pay attention. This is a road that the existing Honda sensing system couldn't even come close to doing since it's under 45 miles per hour. And uh, open pilot works down to 12 miles an hour and all the way to zero with the brake and acceleration, but the steering ends at 12. But that's just a limitation of this particular car. So these are about the maximum turns that this software can take without hitting something. Uh, so it, it, it flashes up the take control um, thing up on the open pilot system so this is really the maximum turning distance it can do which is actually pretty respectable I wish it was a little bit more but that's all things that can be changed if there's a different car that allows a little bit more control over the steering so just like that we're back home we got food and uh, yeah barely had to drive the car at all so definitely an awesome technology I hope you guys enjoyed episode two of my self-driving series. Special thanks to Kama AI for featuring my previous episode on the homepage of their website. That is so awesome. I'm going to have a mini series on the Panda, which is the nicest universal car interface. Future episodes will include things like comparing the Honda sensing system to open pilot, showing off the new software improvements and how it makes the car drive even better, and some modifications to the Kama Neo mold and how it mounts to the car. So stay tuned for future episodes and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!